The following is an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network. I'm, I'm not going to complain about a win. Um, I got to coach this team a little differently. I think I may have to be excited early on about anything that's positive uh, with this group. Um, as you can see, we're, we're not a well-coached basketball team, and I, I'm, that, that's, that's my responsibility. I don't have my thumbprint on this team right now, um, but I do need them to help me, as I told them. Um, I've never taken credit for wins because I don't have any points, assists, steals, or rebounds, and I'm always going to take ownership when something goes wrong, and right now we're not playing with the energy, the passion, the fire. Um, that's required to be a successful basketball team. Um, I told them, you know, to be brutally honest, we don't, we don't have any leadership. And I, I'm not talking about what you're saying and the rah-rah stuff in the locker room. I'm talking about stringing together a consistent set of plays to fuel um, or inspire your teammates. And we have so many self-inflicted wounds that, I mean, we're our own worst enemy right now. We can't go on a run because we get up six and we do something, something silly or we make a, a, a play that's not a high basketball IQ play. And so we foul somebody or we miss a layup and we foul jump shooters or we leave a jump shooter and we don't get back on D. So it's a lot of coaching that, that's required, you know, for us to be better and, and we'll get better hopefully. Um, but I, I told our seniors they did a poor job of, of leading. And in games like this, they have to set the tone right away. Um, Dante Holmes in particular, you know he's he just has to do, has to do better, and I'm not telling you guys anything I haven't told him. Much as much as is 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 expected out of that kid, and you know right now I told him he came out like a first grade kid who was just seeking attention. Like he's stopping by my bench every two seconds trying to talk to us. He's screaming every trip down the floor that day in the boxing one. He's talking to referees. He's talking to play. Like, what are you doing? Just play basketball. You know, he's not that guy as if he was at an NBA All-Star game. And those are the things we got to correct because he's not focused. He's not engaged if you're doing all of those things. You're not Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan at an NBA All-Star game. You got to stay connected. And same thing with Jeremiah Ingram. He's turning the basketball over way entirely too much. The kid had eight turnovers. And I told him, I got to do a better job of putting you in positions to be successful. There's no need to throw outlet passes to half court like you're playing pickup basketball. We've never practiced those things in my life. And you're getting a rebound th trying to throw it the length of the floor. That just don't happen. So we got to go back, watch tape. And I take ownership for all that because if they're doing it, then it's my fault. And, you know, we got to correct it. So fortunately, we got a win. Credit Mississippi Valley State. They came in and they shot the basketball extremely well. We didn't do a good job um, on the kid, Romaine and, and Young. I mean, common sense tell you we told our kids that the two shooters, please don't leave them. And they're the guys that's open the entire night. So hats off to them. They did a great job. They mixed their deal up and made it difficult for us. Yeah, and that's, that's the problem. Um, Dante is the elder spokesman of our team. Dante is not 21 or 22 years old. Dante is a grown man. So anytime you have to have someone telling him what to do, that's the problem within itself. He has to step up and be a man and just lead and stop jockeying for attention and, and, and all of those things. And I told him, I don't mean to sound harsh, but you know, it's really difficult and it's frustrating to coach someone who has all the ability to be a really good basketball player, but they take away from themselves. They become their own worst enemy. Like he don't need to be talking to the bench. He don't need to be talking to the referees. He don't need to be talking to anyone on the court, but his teammates, that's it, <laughs> you know? And, and he can get all the, the instructions he don't need to talk to me too much. He just needs to listen and get the instructions from the point guard. And that's it. And just play basketball. And when he's locked in, he's really good. When he's not, you know, he, it, it comes out and our, our performance is paralyzed for the first 10, 12 minutes. You give a team confidence, and now they say, look, we're going to play with you there. So what's your idea of a leader? Um, well, it's, it's funny you ask. Um, we have five examples of leadership 
here, the first thing is, um, the first act of being a leader is um, lead yourself, all right? That's the first thing. You can't tell anyone else what to do if you're not leading yourself. The, the second thing is um, be vocal. The third is be the hardest worker. The fourth is are you willing to be unpopular? Sometimes you have to call out your teammates. And the fifth one is being an extension of the head coach. And um, you mentioned Pat Cole, and that's, that's the thing. He's not a savior for us by any means. Like, he's still got to come out here and execute himself. But I do give the kid credit for it because he's not, a, he's not afraid to be unpopular. The moment we got back from our road trip, he looked everybody in their eyes in the locker room and told them, you stunk, you stunk, you stunk, you need to do this better, and so on and so forth. And that's the first thing we got to do is take ownership and accountability. And that's what we're accustomed to with the KJs and the Poobies and the Ingrams and those guys. Y'all saw the talent, but inside that locker room, they really held it down and held their teammates accountable. Right now, we just don't have that. So if it wasn't for Rashawn Madison, who came in and just stayed locked in and had two excellent weeks of practice and earned my trust, we would have got beat by 50 points. Yeah, yeah, he's earned that, those minutes. So um, he had zero turnovers, and that's because he's played within himself. He don't try to get out of pocket. He don't try to do anything he can't do. And the system, I told him, look, the system works. Like, it's been players here that, you know, do your history. It works, you know. So just do what we ask you to do and play as hard as you possibly can, and you'll, you'll be successful. He didn't play at all against Louisiana Tech. He only played a minute against Quinnipiac. What did yeah. he kind of show you that, you know, he went out and then played? Well, I was searching, and to be completely honest with you, it, it was like I was playing way too many people, and someone had to separate themselves from others. And that was the part of me trying to get to know and understand this basketball team and, um, you know, A.J. Lynch and, and Jamal Ferguson and, and Rashawn Madison and, you know, all of those guys was just, you put one in for two minutes, you know, another one come in and they just do the same thing. No one had any separation and he kind of separated himself in practice this week, the last two days. And um, so I said, look, but I'm going to give you a shot and he can play. It's just a matter of them separating themselves. And, you know, fortunately he came in and knocked down some some shots, and he played with an extreme amount of confidence, which I like too. He shot the basketball well, and make a miss, he was he was open and he was going to shoot it. Coach with Madison today, he hit six three pointers, he ties it for thirteenth all time in the single game performance. Uh, talk about him as a newer shooter here. What does he see from his performance? He was great. He was great. He played with confidence, and I think the number one thing he got engaged. He can really defend the basketball. Um, Grav didn't play as well. Um, you know, he, I think he. You know, he had a he hit his head on the floor against Louisiana Tech and just looking at him, you know, it takes a while because he didn't practice this week and he just got cleared before the game. So that takes takes its toll on you if you hit your head on the floor. So we had to kind of push him off the ball and allow um, Rashawn to guard their point guard and some more guys as well. He did an excellent job. And what happens is when you engaged on both ends of the floor, good things happen to you. But you can't be talking to the crowd, talking to the referees, talking to the bench, like just talking to everyone as if you're an NBA basketball player and you're capable of turning it on and off like that. You're not a light switch. So I hope they can follow his lead. And, um, you know, I hope he can continue to play well. No, I don't. I don't subscribe to that. People are going to say what they're going to say. Um, the condemnation of others, I'm, I'm well beyond. Um, you know, and our kids are starting to feel it a little bit, which is great, um, because they maybe had a sense of entitlement prior to coming here. You know, and people place some unwarranted expectations, as I mentioned before, on those kids. They don't, they don't deserve to be compared to any other team that I coach. They deserve to have an opportunity to establish their own identity, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find ourselves and. Um, you know, I know they checked their social media pages and we had a conversation the other day and it was like, a lot of people wasn't hitting me on social media telling me great game and so on and so forth. And I told them a story about when I was a kid. Um, I always wanted to go to the park downtown and feed the pigeons because I thought it was a incredible thing when, when people would feed pigeons and you could get like a million pigeons around you. So I asked my mom one day to take me. She took me, she dropped me off, she had a loaf of bread and she just chopped up all the bread and I fed all the pigeons. And it was like a thousand pigeons around me. And when I ran out of bread, they all just <laughs> went away. 
Sounds like the moral of the story is, man, if, if you don't have something to give people, they're not going to stay there and support you. So, you know, we have to give an honest effort, a passionate effort, an inspired effort if we want the love from external factors. But, you know, our motto is we all we got. And they have to understand that and they got to buy into that because they can't live off the shoulders of the previous teams. Just keep fighting um, and buy in. You know, which you, when you have new guys and you have guys who um, have ascended to responsibilities that they're not accustomed to. You know, Dante has, has been led his entire life. And now in senior year, we're asking him to lead. And I'm not necessarily asking him to lead the basketball team. I'm just asking him to lead himself. And then everyone else can kind of follow. And that's how you establish your own identity. You know, you, you, it, it starts with the individual first, and it starts with the individual buy-in. And then once you buy in and just do what the coaching staff asks you to do and trust your teammates and do everything that we're asking you to do, then confidence comes from that, and that, that, that comes from buy-in. And I told him, I can't give you confidence. I can give you a lot of things. I can't give you confidence. That's you coming in and shooting the basketball or doing what you need to do. I can't give you confidence. They're really good, really, really good. And if we play like we did tonight, we'll get ran out the gym. Um, you know, they have some some seniors um, who's evolved, uh, Devin Martin in particular, um, who's probably all-conference performer, really good basketball player. So we're going to have our hands full. And they got a big kid down there that's working on the block, Dominique Elliott. And uh, I think it's Carwell at the four, uh, who's really – Scoring the basketball well, he's he he presents tough matchups, and they well coached with Bobby Collins. So uh, we got our hands full, and what they have to understand, our team, meaning they, when teams come in here, like it's their Super Bowl, they on a they on a natural high, you know. So you got to kind of turn it up another notch, man. Everyone coming in here is like coming in here to. I don't like talking about the streak, but they they coming in here to to rip your head off. And we got to rise up to the occasion with that. I feel like we came out a little sluggish. Um, we picked it up during the middle of the first half, but I feel like we got to come out and jump on them. And um, we got to start playing a little bit more defense. We got to have fun on defense and so we can have fun on the offense and How about the court questions? What changed for you in the second half? You had only three points in the first half. What kind of adjustments did you have to make mentally or, you know, I felt like I just had to leave my team. Um, I mean, it started in the first half, though, with Ray Sean. He had a couple of big shots for us, kept us in the game. And um, as a leader and a senior guard, I feel like second half, I just had to do whatever it takes for my team to win. Coach was talking a lot about how you're, you know, talking to people on the bench, talking to the people in the stands, whatever. What is it? Why do you feel the need to be so vocal, and how do you kind of, you know, learn to just communicate with the teammates on the court? Um, I think I played like that all my life, so it's something I got to change ASAP so I could just remain focused throughout the whole game and not have my mind everywhere else. Um, I mean, he talked to me about that today. I mean, he said it to me before, and now that it's something that he determined for me to do, I just got to stop doing it. How many times do you think he's told you to you know, not be Kobe Bryant or not be Michael Jordan or whatever? Is that like a daily thing? Or? I mean, it's not daily. I mean, I just... Certain games, certain environments of the games, and how certain situations in the game occur. I mean, I play to a situation, and I just need to play basketball and not worry about everything else. We're trying to do everything else on the court besides my job. It's got to happen for y'all to be more consistent down the stretch. Um, it starts in practice, honestly. I think we just got to lock in on the defensive end. And once we lock in on the defensive end and be there for each other, um, I think offensively we will be more efficient and, and execute more. I mean, we just wasn't doing what we were supposed to do, like being in the gaps and stunting up and not just and just leaving shooters wide open. We made an adjustment during the game, but whereas though we couldn't step up on number one or number three, we just got to contain the drive. I really think that we just, just got to be there for each other. And I mean, I think it's thought with the person on the ball just containing the ball and not letting that man draw no gaps. And um, other than that, I think we're going to be pretty all right. I mean, we got a whole new five. We are still trying to work and find our chemistry as a team. 
as the season goes on, I think we're going to get better and better. You guys have two conference games this weekend. Is it, how do you guys feel playing these conference games, A, early in December, and B, in the middle of the next game? I mean, I ain't got a problem with it. I mean, as long as I'm playing in this gym, I know we're going to win. Um, and I'm not saying that as being arrogant. I'm saying it as we just can't lose here. Like, the atmosphere is pretty good, and we know what's at stake if we do lose. So I feel like we just going to have to come to play and not wait so late into the game. We just got to have to jump out early, bring the energy from everywhere so the energy can stay the whole game and we could be up. And um, hopefully we get everybody in the game to play. Is is the game a distraction from studying for exams or, or even vice versa? Um, I wouldn't say so. I mean, I've been doing this ever since I was a kid, just playing ball in school, high school, traveling on the road. Because basketball season is around a crucial time of the school year. And somehow you just got to find a way to get it done. And um, it's been pretty OK. I mean, it wasn't the best. I mean, uh, missing a little bit of practice time because I got finals and stuff like that, and I got to study. So he did give us our time to go work and study and get our books and grades um, correct. Uh, opening statement was we came out kind of sluggish, but then we picked it up. And um, when the second group had came in, and then we had a little energy, then we fought through the game. And now over the questions. You know, you get 20 points, I think. <laughs> uh, it felt good just to see the ball go in. I, then I, I came in with energy on the defensive end, and it translated to the offensive end. So then I started hitting shots. Then I started talking more, engaging, engaging more in the game. So then it was just flow after that. What, what were you doing the last couple of days to kind of distinguish yourself? In uh, I came in practice for the last two days. I had good practices. So Coach Tom always tell me if you have great practices, it translates to the game. So today it just translated over. So. Yes, if I come in with the right mindset and practice mentally and stay engaged in the, uh, and practice being mentally tough when coach gets on me instead of putting my head down on a power, then I'll be fine. You were averaging what, like nine minutes a game or so last season before you got hurt. Is this what you've been kind of trying to work back to? Yes, I was trying to just find a way to compete and get minutes on the court and then take advantage of that when I'm on the court. How did it feel when you hit that first three? It felt good. It felt good to see the ball go through for the first time in a while. So. No, I thought I, I knew I was on. I thought I hit the one at the top of the key and it went in. So then that's when I, I felt the ball. That's when the, the basket got bigger for me. I don't know if you know, you hit six today, and that ties you uh, <laughs> 13th all time in a single game performance here in North Carolina. That's great. That's a great accomplishment for me. Thank you. How much does it help the team to have you, you know, whether you're starting or coming off the bench now, you've kind of proven yourself that you're, you're a threat? It helps the team, me coming in. First of all, on the defensive end, showing my energy, picking up the ball, being engaged, talking more, and then it just translates over to the offensive end for me. The Mississippi Valley was surprised to me by your output, given that on like this scouting report, you're every like point eight point eight. Uh, they were surprised, and then I came in and I was shooting, and that's when they was like, "Get the shooter, get the shooter." But then it was kind of too late for all that. I was, I was getting hot. Were you used to defenses calling you out and being like, "Get that guy"? Like everybody left out. Nah, not lately, no, because I haven't been on the court to play, so i just been in the guy on the bench just trying to cheer my team on and hopefully and bring them energy on the court. What do you think this team has to do to kind of get back on the track? Uh, just stay and coming in practice every day to get better instead of just coming to practice, and then we'll be fine. You mentioned your uh, defensive output today. You are a terrier out there on defense. So talk about your, your defensive mindset. Uh, my defensive mindset, that's what uh, that's what kind of what Coach brought me here to, uh, to play to play on the ball, pressure the ball, and uh, just check the best player on the opposite team. You guys have two conference games this weekend. How do you feel about playing conference games early in December and also in the middle of your exam week? It's kind of tough, but we student athletes, so we got to kind of like get through it. You just got to find time to make time for your exams and come and practice mentally ready. So that's all. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.